Welcome to Dead Rose Radio. Good morning for a Sunday. This is great. <laughs> I woke up so late today. It's it was not good. Not a good thing. Um sat there yesterday. I tried to get some podcast out and then I tried to post and I think I went to bed about eight o'clock. So I've only slept four hours. No wonder I feel I feel like I've been hit by a truck. You know, like, what the hell? That was difficult last night trying to do the podcast because I only have a certain time frame to do it in. So a lot of them were really short, but they they did okay. I mean, I put them up. Uh, one of them for the Spirited Blogger, I'm going to actually uh, be in more depth on the beauty things that you can make out of food products and stuff like that like the old fashioned way I'm going to I'm going to make some podcasts on that stuff so I named this show I don't do eggshells and I'm serious I don't like the feeling that I have to walk on eggshells I'm not an eggshell person let me try to find the eggshell poem. That's not stupid. <laughs> so, sometimes these... Okay. Eggshells. You've made our world of eggshells. We are all trying to walk on it. That's from Katie Mack. That was a short... That was a short one. This is from someone named Gigi. Eggshells. That's how they described her bones, as fragile as eggshells. Her bones broke and then she fell, not the other way around. For heaven's sakes, don't tell her that following all the doctor's advice got her nowhere, nowhere but falling down. Okay, that that one's kind of morbid. Isn't there like a funny one somewhere? This is from W. Felament. Emotions as eggshells. Strong, smooth, firm, upon the surface, but oh so very thin, and cracks already spread. I thought that you could trust me, could lean on my strength, but oh so very wrong I was, a terrible mistake. For now I am a hollow man, a shell of what I was. I want peace, not with you, but with me. That was my only dream. From Madeline May how much longer until my corpse is too broken for all the king's horses and all the king's men to put my body back together again? It's already, gosh, it's already two o'clock. I think the time change is messing me up. I don't know if it went forward or backwards. It's kind of hard to tell nowadays because back in the day when the time changed, it was a big deal because people had to manually change their clocks. So if they didn't change them, They'd be late for work or early for work, you know, or um, it would affect something. But now everybody's got cell phones and computers and it updates automatically. So I don't even know when the time changes happen, but I heard that it, that's why it feels weird because it changed last week, I guess. And yeah, I just feel weird, like my sleeping schedule's all off. But it's because, you know, of what we've been doing. But everything should be going back to normal. I got my son back. <laughs> my youngest one came back yesterday. And uh, now he's back to just ignoring me. But at least I feel comfortable. You know, I know where he's at. I, I know that he's here, so I feel better. I don't know if he feels better, but I feel better. Um, so that's that's a good thing. Because I was tripping out, like... At night, and maybe that's why my schedule got so messed up, because at night I start freaking out, like if there's nobody here, and I start thinking I'm hearing things, like there were several times like I heard something close, or I, and I just assumed he was in the house, and then I remember like, no, nobody's here, you know, it's just me, so if, maybe that's what my thing was, I just stayed up all night till the sun came up and just went to bed, because I was like just freaked out. I was like, already? We have, I don't have weapons, but um, uh, my other son, you know, he, he works on cars. So on the porch, there's an actual, well, I, I guess that don't do me any good. It's on the damn porch. Oh, well, anyways, there's this bucket, like one of those big old white paint buckets or whatever. 
just filled with these long metal things. I don't even know what they are. They're just like things. Like when you put on something that you pump up to lift the car up. Another one has these forks on it for something to pull something. I don't know what they are, but if I had one with me, I could do some serious damage if somebody tried to come and get me because they're kind of long. But now that I just think about it, I don't know why I don't have one in here. I should have one under my bed just in case, you know. I could just like reach over and grab and, and beat the crap out of somebody if they try to come in here. <laughs> that was stupid. It's out on the porch. <laughs> well, anyways, okay, so I guess, I mean, I had some stuff to help me if I had to. All right. Well, whoops. Good afternoon, RD. Long metal things do damage. Yeah. And it's weird. Like, if someone broke in here, there's nothing to steal anyways because I sold off almost everything I have. Um... Oh, that's what I was supposed to do this weekend. Damn it. Now I just remembered. I'm supposed to be posting that 1,500 items. Let me see how many days I have. I thought it was only for three days. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm not supposed to sit here and mess around. I'm supposed to try to make some money. Yeah, because we're going to, we're going to, we decided on a major life change. And I haven't looked at my credit score in a very, very long time because my, you know, from a past relationship, my credit score was so messed up. I mean, I, I the other person was really into credit cards and stuff like that, right? So we had Sears, Best Buy, um, I think some other things. We had different credit cards, and sometimes we use them, but my name was on them, like a joint kind of thing. And he was pretty good about paying the bills, but I didn't like them because I don't know if I can always keep up with it, you know, because I would rather just pay with cash. And they said, oh, no, this is to build your credit up and all this stuff. This is like really back when I was a lot younger, okay? And I guess it was like the thing to do. They said, oh, no, you got to build your credit up and stuff. It fucked my credit up. The whole thing messed up my credit so bad. And we had this Best Buy one. And I swear, I bought a printer. The printer cost maybe $200 at the time. The card started off with $500 on it, and all I bought was the printer. I paid on that card what seemed like four or five years and never paid off that damn printer because they keep adding these fees and stuff like that. And it was so dumb. And, you know, um, after a while, I was like, I'm not paying this anymore. The damn thing has to be paid off. This is ridiculous. So it was a big ordeal. Anyways, they totally damaged my credit. They had like six collections after this one card all hit in my credit page. All for the same bill. And I waited for the years to go and they still were on there, right? Like eight years later they were still on there. So finally I started writing and disputing and I was like, this thing, you know, I don't know. I don't know, you know. Um, Anyways, it was a big ordeal, and they would take it off, and they would come back on. And the way these creditors do it is like any time they ding it, it's a new. It starts off new. So even though six years have went by, as long as they go in there every single month and keep dinging it, it doesn't show that any time has passed. And so finally, I just totally ignored it. I haven't looked at it in like ten years. And then last night. Um, my oldest son talked me into it. He's like, just go look, just go look. And I'm like, no, I'm not looking at that damn thing. You know, because like now I don't use credit cards at all, at all. Like I'm not, no credit cards. If I can't pay in cash, I don't buy it. That's just how it is. I don't care about establishing anything. I won't. You know, just like my car, I make sure that I could pay it off. I have no car payments. 
I make sure that I have no payments anywhere except for electricity, gas, you know, the basic stuff for the house, and that's it. I don't want no bills because I'm going to forget that they're there and stuff. So, um, okay, so we finally looked last night, and it was like everything was off. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is great, you know. I mean, it's not totally perfect, but it's good. It's good enough. And it's like the only thing that's on there that's kind of hurting me is uh, my very first student loan back from 1980-something, you know. And uh, I must have, I went over 30 days, 60 days or something. And I guess it's before I went, before my deferment papers came in or something like that. So, uh he told me to call them and I just ask them, you know, if they see I'm good standing on everything else, if they will just take that part off because that will just like bring me through the roof kind of thing. And I was like, oh, so we looked at that last night. So that's like my new, the new thing I'm going to be working on is a credit report. I, that was very shocking. I was like so shocked. I thought for sure all that stuff would stay on forever. And the cool thing is I have three cars on there too. Totally paid, never late. So I guess that helped. And one of them that they have on there is from two, the year 2000. So it's like, I can't believe they still have that car on there. But I'm not going to complain because it shows good, you know. So I guess that's a plus. So I'm going to fix this up and I'm going to get a brand new car. <laughs> I'm going to get me a, I'm going to get me a, um, I've always wanted a charger. I know some people don't like them, but that's my current dream car. Like, I want a charger. I want it black. I want my my windows tinted mafia black, okay? I want the whole damn thing to be just mafia out. I will be so happy. But I don't know if they, I don't know if they have sunroofs on it, but heck, I'll get the sunroof on it. That'd be badass. Talk about, um midlife crisis I don't care I don't have no shame so I'm gonna do that <laughs> I'm like all excited okay so that's that was the news on that that was credit report deserts credit her good standing awesome credit and I'm totally craving bacon I guess while the music was playing I could have walked over there and put the bacon in the oven I don't do I don't do pan bacon anymore. I only do oven bacon, and you know what? It comes out really good. It comes out like the restaurants, because I used to do the pan thing, and all it did was come out greasy and shriveled up and curled up, and there's hardly anything there. But if you do it in a pan and you flatten it out, it stays crispy just like that, and then I'll just eat them. <laughs> but the bad thing is, I'll eat the whole thing. Like I'll eat all of it. That's how addicted I get. So it's not great, but it actually makes me feel better because I guess the protein and stuff in it. Oh, I think I'm waking up. Did I, did I drink that coffee already? Oh, oh, no, there's a, a tiny bit left. I'm like so addicted to the coffee. Okay, so the show is called I Don't Do Eggshells. I don't walk on eggshells. That's my big thing. You know, I spent a lifetime of walking on eggshells. Like, walking on eggshells is like, you, you have to constantly be mindful of where you go, who you talk to, what you say, what you buy, um, your any type of small action because you feel like people are watching you and they're looking for you to do something wrong. Even though you had no intention of doing anything wrong, you're really not doing anything, to be honest. But it is a form of abuse if you're in a relationship, you know. Um, and it's more damaging than physical abuse because the outcome is, um, and for most people, if they walk on eggshells or in a walking on eggshells type of relationship, like their husband and stuff like that, the person will suddenly ignore them. They'll say something really f small 
but then they won't let them, they won't really talk to them, right? They'll just spout out their shit and leave it on you and walk away and ignore you. So that you really have no um, communication, you know, you can't really say anything or communicate it out because they won't allow it because they're punishing you for whatever they thought in their fucking head happened. You can't even explain yourself or just fix a misunderstanding and it's part of abuse. So that's what I mean. I don't do eggshells. I used to do that shit and it fucked me up for a very long time when I was younger and you know but that kind of comes in with people with um, personality disorders and stuff. They, they play that shit on people and that's where it's the manipulation and abuse and stuff. It gets really it gets really deep but but it, you can also have it in friendships. You know, uh, the person will be going on with their day and just doing their own thing. And then suddenly you got people upset at you for something that you're like, what the hell? What did I do? So you ask them, what did I do? They'll say, okay, something you appear to be doing. But when you technically, when you look at it, you really didn't do shit. It was something you appear to be doing. A, a, appear to be doing this and here's the thing if you're in a friendship or relationship like that and these people should know you they should know your character they should just know you in general but it's like a mob mentality to suddenly everybody's gonna think this this means there's one person there was one person who got pissed off and that means people have been talking shit behind your back and gossiping because if there was a problem with just one person, it would have been one on one. But if there's suddenly a problem with several people, that means somebody in that group was talking shit and feeding that into people's heads. I'm not an idiot. That's what walking on eggshells is. Fuck that shit. 